Good afternoon, and welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We are having a great time already, and we're just at the beginning. Um, it's such an honor to be a part of and to be able to share the stage with Micah James. Um, and we're going to have an opportunity to really dig in and spend some time adding to our success kit when we talk about self-care today. So we're going to learn a little bit more in here from, from Micah in that regard. Um, but again, welcome back. I am Wendy Adams, and I have the illustrious privilege to be a part of the co-host cohort, and that is exactly it. Julia C. Patrick has joined me today, um, but there are others who are a part of this, and that's Mitch Stein, Miko Marquette Whitlock, Tony Bell, Sherry Kwam Taylor, and Meredith Tarian. We have a great time. It really is a little illegal how much fun we were able to have, I say, uh, but it is. It's a good time to be had by all. And it wouldn't be possible if not for our presenting sponsors. Um, Bloomerang, which Micah comes from today, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique Inc., Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Tech Talk, and JMT Consulting. So many have been with us right from the beginning, and I believe we're at 1,100 episodes. So that says a lot, and we really are so grateful. What fun we have in store for us today. And so, Julia, let's get ready. All right. Well, hey, Micah James, one of our faves from Bloomerang. Everybody at Bloomerang is great. But Micah, you come to us with some really interesting perspectives. Mm. And six kids in tow that you manage. Um, and when I knew you well before I knew you had such a big brood at home. And I always am like amazed at what a calm woman you are. And so I, I have to like give you the shout out for like motherhood because Aww. it's really amazing that you can do all this. So welcome back, my friend. It is such a joy to be here. And I will say that the crew is doing their summer thing in just the other room. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll hope the storm keeps at bay today. No, I'm just kidding. They're great. They're great. They're doing their thing. So. It's cool. Well, talk to us about what your position, senior platform coach, means because we've been watching you since the beginning. Um, Bloomerang was one of our very first sponsors, and you've really grown with the organization. What is it that you do to support the Bloomerang family, if you will? Yeah, I've been with Bloomerang three years, and over that time, Bloomerang has been really intentional about investing in partnering with organizations as they utilize the product. So mm -hmm. my, the team that I sit on helps organizations really maximize the nonprofit experience with Bloomerang. So uh, as senior platform coach, I work with nonprofits day in and day out to make sure they're maximizing those workflows, setting up those online forms to be as frictionless as possible, you know, doing that good best practice of receiving and acknowledgement and good cultivation so they can have that high donor retention. So really walking all the way through the donor experience um, side by side with those organizations. Amazing. It's got to be um, somewhat of an interesting journey for you working with organizations, because I've got to believe a lot of them have never done a digital platform mm -hmm. experience or interface. Um, so you're not just taking people that used to know one product and now they need to know an, another. You're dealing with people on a brand new structure. Mm -hmm. Is that is that fair to say or not? Handful of people that are coming straight from, you know, uh, Excel or Google Sheets uh, with their donor information into their first CRM. So, you know, one of my favorite moments is the the ahas of like, you mean you mean I don't have to do this manually anymore? You mean you mean I can use these mail merges and set this up with automation? You mean? And so, you know, just seeing kind of you know those fundraising practices come to life and technology come alongside fundraising in a fun way. Yeah. That's cool. Tears well, of joy. Tears of joy. Yeah, I, Wendy, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Because you know, Wendy, how it is when that light bulb goes off and then all of a sudden you're like, yes. holy moly. It's not like I'm going to go home early today. It's that I'm going to get to do other work that I need to get done, right? Well, I, I'm productive. I feel efficient. 
I'm serving with excellence, right? The, all of those things. So, wow. Yeah. Well, let's get when into brought, it. I'm yeah, sorry, when but... I brought the technology to my very first organization, because that's how I found Bloomerang is I was a user uh... before. Um, when I brought it to my first organization, you know, the, the staff that was with me, they were like, they exactly said that. They were like, what am I going to do with the rest of my time? And I was like, we're going to go do good stuff. Um, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I mean, it's exactly that, Julia. Oh, my gosh. I love it. You know what? That is, for me, when I hear you say that, and both of you ladies, you know, echo this, um, it's it's the silver lining from the pandemic. It's yes. the movement into some new technology and processes and procedures that, you know, the nonprofit sector is slow to move, slow to change. And so this um, is like, OK, you know, this was one of those benefits that we that we had. But let's talk about something that, that maybe is not a benefit mm -hmm. or should be a benefit, something that we don't talk about. And that's work life and balance in the nonprofit sector. Does this exist? <laughs> Is the unicorn real? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I think I think we have sort of a like misnomer when it comes mm -hmm. to the word balance. I think when we hear the word balance, we think 50-50. And we think everything is supposed to be equal all the time. And when I think of work-life balance, I think ebb and flow, yin and yang. And, you know, as fundraisers, we really need to make sure that everything in the end works out balanced. Mm -hmm. But on any mm -hmm. given day, you might have more, uh, you know, donor cultivation appointments than you do you know, gem time. And then, you know, on another day, you might have a longer lunch with your best friend than you do, you know, entering data. And and so at, it's an ebb and flow, not necessarily making sure that all of those calendar blocks uh, match at the end of every day, 50-50. Okay. Because you know <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe I'm late to the game, ladies. But I swear to God, I didn't, I, I've never thought of it that way as an ebb and flow. To me, it's been like very hard and linear. And that's where the the crisis comes in because you never meet it. It never well, works. That's it. It doesn't. There, there is no even. And, and Julia, you're not late to the table. That's just how we've been programmed for so long. I mean, Micah, you said I can have lunch. Not like, I mean, not just at the desk, but you said with a friend. And so it's, it's that integration that we're talking about. Right. And, and I think it was so wonderful that you jumped into define balance for us because we weren't, we weren't defining it correctly. Um, man, I've been waiting for this all week. I just, oh gosh. And, and it's one thing to define it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to then extend that conversation into your organization. Because yes. I can very well have a good understanding of balance for myself. I can have that block of, you know, a shorter lunch on one day and a longer lunch mm -hmm. on one, another day. But if I don't communicate that to my team and my director and my board about like, let's have a real conversation about what fundraising life looks like, then some of our board live in a nine to five blocked world. Yeah. And the ebb and flow won't make sense. Mm -mm. And so we really need to have a real conversation about how it's all going to work out in the end. I'm still doing my job. If you come in at 1.30 and I've taken a longer lunch, that doesn't mean that I've taken a longer lunch every day. That means that one day I probably worked 14 hours. And this is just the flexible balance to make sure that I'm with you past 18 months, which is what we know is the tenure of the Whoa. average fundraiser these days. So like, this is this is our conversation to make sure that this is sustainable. Well, I'm gonna brag on Wendy and I a little bit, actually, no, a lot of it. You know, we had Mike Geiger, the CEO of um, AFP on, mm -hmm. and we called him out on this and we said, first of all, is this data, correct that ASP has been reporting 18 months 
is the only is the average tenure time of a professional fundraiser. And his comment to us was that it is it's moving up and there's a little bit more um, recognition of stronger job satisfaction. And his comment, Wendy and I were like, OK, yeah. Uh, and he was a super fun guest, really. Interesting. Yes. I mean, we he, he, he was so engaging. But he said he felt like across the country, 1.8 million of our nonprofits, they're starting to pay uh, a little bit more. And that that was the ticket for keeping people mm -hmm. on. But I'm telling you, I think now talking with you, while that is the pay is incredibly value, of course, valuable. I'm wondering if it's not this conversation that needs to be had first. Yeah. I mean, I, I've worked for several nonprofit organizations and some of them understood this better than others. Mm -hmm. And I will say, there's a stress feeling when you walk in at 930 and your administrative staff's been there since eight. And if there's not an understanding in the whole staff that, no, I'm doing my job. My job looks different than yours. Yes. Um, there's a little bit of tension and jealousy built into the culture. If you don't have that conversation out loud. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's Micah. You said it really well when you said even to your board they mm -hmm. have an expectation that everyone that they may looks like the way that they work within their sector mm -hmm. and so it's really informing them it's not that they want to keep us in a box it's the only box that they know so let's make sure that they understand and you said it so well my job looks different and all of us doing our jobs to our best is what makes us all better. So I, yeah, so good. So, so good. It's, it's well, really. And to, be, and to be honest, if we're doing our job really well, they want us out of the building. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> you do not, you, I'm not here to sit and meet, not with yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. 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 At I least a portion of the time. You know, I think that's true, Micah, yeah. but I think that a lot of people, there's still this old fashioned, if you're sitting at your desk, you're working mentality, right? And so that's part of the whole conversation of everything from work from home, work from anywhere. But let's move on to this intersection of sustainable fundraising, because I think mm. that's kind of what you were leading us into with, you know, sharing about how our jobs look different. But I like, I agree with Wendy, that communication piece mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. C-suite and board huge. What does the intersection of sustainable fundraising look like? You know, there are lots of studies right now that say the, the, the micro donor is dissolving and the, you know, the DAFs and the, the big donors are really where it's at, um, which is putting a lot of pressure on fundraisers right now, because if I don't get that big gift, then I'm going to not going to go meet my goal. But there's this middle section, right, of the recurring givers or the loyal givers that really are going to make this kind of wonderful river of sustainability for your organization. And we don't, A, often have the capacity to focus on them, or mm -hmm. B, the board is like, no, I want you to go after the million dollar Baby. gift or the five million dollar gift. And when we lose sight that it's not either or, but it's both and, it's really important to know that that's, that's really stressful that if I don't get that, then it's broke, it's broken, like I've missed it. And so allowing your donor, your, your fundraisers to have the time to invest in mm -hmm. the hundred dollar gift 12 times a year and you know, the $500 gift year over year is going to alleviate that stress, but also it's going to build long relationships with your organization that are going to live way beyond that particular fundraiser. And that's what it's all about, right? We are not looking to do this today and it drop off for tomorrow. Everything we're doing is about sustainability. When we think of the big, hairy, audacious goals that we're going after, it, that has to be at its foundation. And you hit on it, that monthly donor, that sustainable piece, that river 
also turns into that planned gift well beyond. And we, we tend to miss how those dots connect. This is a huge piece that we can't overlook. Wendy, I've got to ask you this question. I mean, the way you just said it was so eloquent and logical and calm. But do you think boards understand this? Not to that extent. And some. But we don't talk about it enough. Like Literally, that conversation has to happen. We go back to, we cannot assume. We know we can't assume with our donors. Why would we do that with our board? They don't know. And so let's let's educate them in that space. And we may have to remind when it's, hey, go after the big, how much it makes a difference. You know, it, it really is. I've just seen, even personally, missed opportunity for that 25-year donor who was giving $50 a month. And when they passed, not even an opportunity. This happened personally, where we even spoke of the opportunity for legacy giving, because it was just an overlook. We can't keep doing that. I can count time and time again where I'm in a room and the board would rather have a list of the, you know, Mm. major donors and the top donors that we're going after than the loyal donors, right? The five, 10, 15 year donors. And I, I feel like we're really missing an opportunity, not only to support our fundraisers and our organization, but really to kind of build a sustainable model. Um, We should really reinforce that it's easier to keep a donor and yes. go get a new one. <laughs> um, keep, so. keep staff, then keep churning. I mean, over and over again, it's that yes. sustainable piece that, yes, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. so interesting. You know, um, when you talk about the, I think of my mother saying, you know, keeping the wolves, you know, at bay from the door and and yes. how the stress builds up in the, 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 the fundraising team. And in a mm-hmm. lot of our nonprofits, they're like one people. That's a one person team. And the stress of walking through the door, did you get the money? Are we going to get paid? You know, can we keep going? So how do we look at self-care and professional life, Micah? Um, because I agree with you. There's a sense for a lot of folks, especially when we talk about programming to fundraising, it's like, oh, the, the programming people do the hard work and the fundraising people, they just go out to lunch. Right. Well, and we're even counted in that ugly, heaven forbid, overhead number. Right. Um, (laughs) And uh, so, uh, no, one of the things that I really hone on, even when I manage teams myself, is like, we're not just like pranking every day, Mm -hmm. all day. You're not just a widget in a wheel. Like you're not just a fundraiser in a in a workflow like I have to know you as a human. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is not like, how was that ask or how is that project or whatever? It's like, how are the kids? Like, what'd you do this weekend? Like on the very basic level, like I have to know you as a human. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. because if I don't know you as a human, I don't know what's stressing you out. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you've got a mom that's sick. I don't know mm-hmm. if your house got hit by a tornado. I don't know if, you know, you've got some, you know, financial worries because your kid's about to go to college. Like, I, I don't know what's going on in your world outside of the stress of I've got to go get that major gift. I've got to build this sustainable river because we all know that's what on the outside affects what's on the inside. Mm-hmm. So we've got to make sure that we know the human inside of the fundraiser so good so good and you know who does know the human the donor the donor (laughs) knows those answers you're having those conversations yeah Yeah, Yeah, absolutely that's an interesting comment i've never thought of it that way Mm -hmm. but that's probably that's probably more true than we realize because of those relationships that we're building yeah Yeah. well you can't do it over here and yeah, and it reflects on the organization. You know, I, I I have had some kind of awkward encounters with donors where they're like, they're grinding you that hard? Don't they know X, Y, or Z? Um, and I'm like, oh, you, you know that, you know, my kid's been sick with, you know, X, Y, or Z, but like, and you're recognizing that I'm sweating bullets from every orifice. Like, and so they know 
Mm -hmm. how the organization is treating their employees. Um, You know, Um, you know, it plays into the pay question. It plays into, you know, the PTO question. It plays that like, so mm -hmm. if you think those, those fundraisers are showing up and they're like robots and able to do the donor, the donors are humans too. They're pretty perceptive. Oh, and they're, yeah. they're they're gonna know what I like. Uh, oh, sorry, I was a few minutes late. The kid was sick. Like, you know, they're gonna pick up on they, they they do. I had a donor say, "Don't you dare! Don't you dare call me on the thirtieth of December uh, unless you're calling to see Happy New Year." Like, don't you? You know, they do. They care about the human. You've built that relationship, and they want to make sure that that's what's happening within the organization. So. It's, it is holistic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, you know, we've, we've teased you because you're a, a working mother of six and you've got so much going on um, and you live in a uh, tornado alley. So even as we speak, uh, you have, you know, life to think about and worry about as an employee and say you're take your mind back to that time you're working at a nonprofit. Mm. What would make you feel valued and and cared for in your professional life? Like, yeah. you know, you, it's easy to say, okay, more money. I need an increase in my salary. But what are some other things that organizations should be looking at so we're not doing this churn and burn on our on our uh, team? Yeah, uh, you know, we talk about sustainability and funding. I think there's also a, a sustainability and schedule. Um, you know, seven events in the spring versus, you know, you know, so just being aware of, you know, if we have five events in May and I have school kids, they also have 47 events in May. Um, and so there's just this awareness of, um, the world around us, mm -hmm. you know, we're not, the, I had somebody tell me once is like, you know, you're not the only thing in town, right? Um, and I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, and so just an awareness of, you know, you're part of a collective, you're not mm -hmm. the only thing, um, you know, and, and, you know, we joke about the pay thing, but I don't think I've ever worked in a nonprofit where at least one member of the staff was also receiving government services. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Either, what a you know, great child, point. Childcare support, food support, something. And, mm -hmm. you know, even to this day, I look at some of the job postings and we're hearing numbers like it's taking between 80,000 and 100,000 for, you know, to be a middle class family. And I'm seeing postings at half that oh, in yeah. the nonprofit mm -hmm. world. And, you know, we've got to have a real conversation about this overhead versus, um, oh. you know, program thing. And if we really want to make an impact, we've got to invest in actually raising the funds for that impact. And it's not a bad thing. Um, and so helping me as a fundraiser have that conversation because I can't be the only voice. Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, I would get really passionate about it, but if I don't have other people around me doing that, that would make my world as an employee so much better. Um, and honestly, you know, pizza parties are great, but mm, um, and, you know, just understanding that, you know, life happens and cars break down and all of that, um, just yeah. goes so much further than anything else. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's like bringing some, you know, humanity to mm -hmm. our, our labor force. But I also think that even if we just look at it in terms of dollars and cents, I think we need to be more, um, strategic and just not saying, well, you know, our employees are passionate and they work with, you know, their hearts and stuff like that. That's not sustainable. That is not mm -hmm. sustainable. And, and we want professionals. We want educated uh, professionals. We want our kids in America going through nonprofit management curriculum in the university and, and master's and doctoral levels. Right. So we've got to, to elevate these, these conversations so that, it is a valued profession. Um, Absolutely. If we so don't. well said. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it, Wendy. If we don't, um, we we lose them to the for-profit world where they can achieve and do well and 
you know. And, and what are what are we saying? What's the message that we're sending to those that we're serving? Right? Mm-hmm. You know, help we're we're here to help you, but if they don't see that, we've got to walk the talk. Really, it it comes down to really walking that out. And so we're doing so much better in that within our organizations and they're watching. I and mean, we've yeah. talked about that. They see. So that is so important. So important. Micah, James, wow, this has been fun. I feel like you've taken us to church today and school and helped us to understand some things that we think of. Now, I don't say we think about it, but maybe we sense, but we can't, we haven't articulated it and mm-hmm. we haven't, you know, pulled it in. My big takeaway, Wendy, and I don't know about you, but, um, and it's, it was like a ha, aha, duh moment. Like I should know this, but, you know, you illuminated it. Was it, we need to be communicating to our teams and our boards about what our workflow is and what it is we're doing um, so that we can gain that understanding of how the work is going. Yeah, absolutely. And and at the top, defining balance. What does that word really mean? And making sure that we all are on the same page so we can move forward better together. Better together. Yeah. Micah James, Senior Platform Coach with Bloomerang. Check out Bloomerang. They are an amazing company because they give so much information, Mm -hmm. so much um, perspective, and you don't have to be one of their clients. Now, of course, you know, they want you to be a client, but the reality is they share and and are such a thought leader. uh, It's truly remarkable. It really is. And you can get this amazing information that they are creating, that they're cultivating, um, that they're researching, that they're part of at bloomerang.com. And it is truly, you could spend weeks on your platform, uh, Micah. <laughs> Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. They're, I mean, from thought leaders to just best practice workflows to everything in between. Absolutely. And you have a lot of webinars, you have a lot of training um, environments from folks all over the country. And so it's a really diverse and robust um, engagement piece. It's not just uh, Bloomerang folks doing infomercials. It's it's really, I think, a, a, a fascinating cross of, of folks that come in and talk um, from CEOs to board members to fundraisers, mm-hmm. a little bit of everything. So Check out uh, Micah and as senior platform coach at Bloomerang. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll get her one of these days, right? Come right. on, Dan. Let's, let's do this. I love it. Another thing I love are our amazing sponsors. And that includes Bloomerang, as we mentioned, where Micah James joins us from. American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. You know, every day um, we end this show, Wendy, with our message that goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Um, And I think we've got to be thinking about that now with that lens of fundraising. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the cup got filled today so we can pour (laughs) out. Fantastic. Yep. Absolutely. Let's go make an impact. I love it. All right, ladies, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you here for another episode of The Nonprofit Show.